Okay, I can feel it now, yeah? You keep feeding and I'll keep pulling. Pull again. Keep going, that's perfect. What? Keep going, that's perfect. I know, I am. Fucking idiot, you're shouting at me. Now it's The rope is tight. There we go. Pull, Michael! I am, the thing's gonna snap. What? The rope is gonna snap, you deaf bastard. Don't call me a deaf bastard. I'm pushing it in, I'm feeding it. I can't feed it in anymore. We're caught somewhere then. What are you saying? Oh my God. Pull it back a bit and then feed it again. I can't hear you in the fucking shed, okay? I know. Listen, stop. Stop walking. Listen. I have this plastic thread pulled to its limit. It is going to snap. Okay. I can't pull too hard here, okay? okay. So when you feel it getting st stopped inside, yeah. pull it back a little bit and then go okay. again. Anywhere. I can't pull it back either. I've let the slack off. You're pulling? Yeah, I'm pulling. It's yeah. How much of it is going in, right? But so, you take where that cape is okay. and walk down the way there. Okay. Daddy, don't let it come the whole way. Stop. Stop. Yeah. It's only going as far as the, the line. That's what I thought. I put Vaseline on it. Make it greasy. Yeah, get the Vaseline. Ah, uh, there. Yeah. Put it the make it greasy. Don't you lady Doris, have you got any grease? Then grease me up, woman. <laughs> You're only going halfway. It's so fucking hard, you can hear it. You pushing? Are you stuck again? No, go ahead. I think I'm at the bend there. Yeah, you're on the bend, yeah, whoa, you're on the bend. I can't, yeah, whoa, whoa. You're on the bend. Don't come, come around the bend, Mike. Maybe uh, go ahead, go ahead, I have it. it yeah, I have it where you had it last time. Good. Now you got it. Now. You have it out. You stupid boy. Throw the pin down to it. <laughs> It seems that the blockage was caused by the genius who buried the conduit in the first place accidentally driving one of these grass pins down through it after he put the grass back down. To start off we're going with this basic A-frame shape as opposed to just one single upright as this will carry the weight much better and be more stable in high winds and bad weather. This tilting array is being built to suit a 1762mm tall by 1134mm wide Jinko N-type panel, but you can modify the design to suit whatever size panel you've got. The cut measurements for each side are 120 centimeters, and the cut measurement for the cross brace is 61 centimeters. The main hinge on each frame is some 8mm threaded bar that I've cut to 25 centimeters length. And as you guys can see from the color of this, I've given it the obligatory coat of Ron Seal Fence Life. I've worked with that for many years and I've seen it be good for up to two years from a single application. So I tend to use that on all my wooden projects. The upper frame sections is essentially just a rectangular box. We'll go together something like that with a hinge point in the middle. The cut measurements for each of those is again 120 centimeters with 11.7 for each of the end blocks. So with that done, it looks something like this. Nice and free so that there's no resistance on any actuators getting it to tilt over 
and it has a pretty good range of tilt that's got to be somewhere around 50 degrees there if you're using this design yourself how many of these you'll need to make will depend completely on how long the array is going to be i'm putting one of these every meter and it's a five and a half meter long array and that gives plenty of support for the weight load of both the wood and each panel before i can put them in the ground i've got to coat them with my new favorite product <music> Because the slope on the hillside isn't perfectly equal the whole way along, what I'm going to do is attach all the frame pieces together at the correct angle before cementing everything into place. The first stage of assembling the top section is to insert a threaded bar into the metal sleeve and to lubricate it I'm using CV grease which is short for constant velocity grease. Best to apply this with a paintbrush because the tolerance in the sleeve is so fine that you need to get the grease in between the threads of the threaded bar as opposed to just smear it all over it. And that way it'll continue to lubricate for a very very long time. Once we've got that done, we can then go ahead and stick on the pivoting top. And again, we've got metal sleeves into each one of these. They're going to be a little bit of a tight fit to go on. But having that hinge bolt in place first means that all we've got to do is slide these together and then stick a couple of screws in each end. And again, two pairs of nuts on the end of the threaded bar. And when you're all done, it should look something like that. Some of you guys might know this already, but if you don't, and you're building a solar array, you want to bury your PV cables underground. This stuff is a great way to do it. This is 32 mil flexible conduit. It's available from Kelleher's, Trade Electric Group, various suppliers nationwide. You can buy it by the meter, or you can buy a whole 30 meter roll of it for between 70 and 80 euros. To get your wire through the conduit, obviously you want to run a string line first. A handy way I found of getting it through is to use something like this. It's a big rusty old heavy drill bit. You tape the wire to it. That way you can just drop it straight in and keep shaking it the whole way along until you get to the end. With Christmas just around the corner, there's not much left in the kitty for another reel of wiring. So I'm saving a few quid here by reusing the old twin and earth that used to be the wire for the panels on the rotating array. No one's going to notice anyway as it gets buried underground. Well, I'll use that just for the, uh, for the 12 volt circuits. Now you might be asking yourself, how am I going to get all of those to lock together into one cohesive unit that's level enough to put solar panels onto? Because they do look a bit all over the place. And you're right, they are. None of those is in millimeter perfect alignment with each other. So the first stage to doing that is to set each one in a locked and level position. I simply just attach them together with a load of 2x4s. Those 2x4s will also act as the rails for the panels to sit on. You had a pissed off head in you from the window, I said I'd come out to you. There's been another fuck up. The axis of rotation is off. I was trying to be clever and it's backfired on me. Do you know what it reminds me of? What? Where are those things like uh, you hang out the tree? It's a uh, gazebo uh, hammock. It's about as useful as one now, truth be told. Yeah, it's about as useful as one now, truth be told. The axis of rotation is off. It's trying to twist instead of coming down. So I'm going to have to figure it out. I have to take these sides back off. You see, I'd hoped that these would lock them all together and function as the rails for the panels to sit on. But, nope. That's as far as it goes. And you can see that it's trying to twist. So I'm gonna to have to redesign the hinge point and come back to it again, basically. Plan B. That's a bit of a pain in the ass, it really is. Anyway, to be continued.